Mr. Hulls, um, you have the floor. Two minutes. Please uh, state your name and whom you represent. My name is Dale Hulls, and I represent the uh, Tea Party Caucus Advisory Committee, uh, the Border Security uh, Subcommittee of that. I also am here representing Texas Border Volunteers. I'm here to give uh, statements on that. I have offered to you as evidence a statement from the Texas Border uh, Volunteers uh, written by a uh, Jim Gibson, uh, so we put that in evidence. I also have uh, put in evidence something written, uh, a white paper called A Constitutional Approach to Employ the Use of Interstate Compacts to Address Illegal Immigration and Border Security at the State Governmental Level. This thing was written and got out around January this year. It's been distributed widely across the grassroots leaders. This is kind of a consensus thought that we this is the this is the right approach it is a normal system uh interstate compacts as bob has said has gone around for uh 200 of them over the last couple of 100 years here in fact interstate compacts predated the constitution it is very settled law as far as the supreme court goes and what we're asking is that we want to support sb 1252 uh, we want this legislation if passed it will provide a statement from the legislature that they support our governor in one of his top emergency priorities of border security uh, to work with other states to achieve a necessary um, consensus in protecting their own interests with regards to border security. I cannot state more forcefully that is what is needed. Uh, the paper you've got is a sort of an outline plan. On, uh, it gives lots of background and where to go with this. Uh, we think this is the correct remedy for Texas and other states who care about their own borders and their own internal security to uh, start addressing this problem in lieu of federal inaction. Perfect timing. Thank you. Very good. Questions? Yes, sir, Mr. Hulls. Uh, you said you are also with the board, the border volunteers. Yes, sir. I think you had a letter here from them. Rather than necessarily reading the letter, could you summarize? We have it. It'll be entered into the record. Here, can you summarize what what the border volunteer observations are, experience? Uh, yes, I can. I'll speak to that as briefly as I can um, to do that. Um, the thing about the Texas border volunteers, I, I'll just go ahead and say some of the testimony I heard today fits exactly in line with what we see out there around the Foul Furious Border Patrol checkpoint. We go out there and we assist Border Patrol by uh, posting out in the Texas ranch lands. We watch for uh, criminal trespassers, and we report those to Border Patrol and uh, try to direct their movements as well as follow the movements of the criminal trespassers themselves. We have noticed that the, the groups coming through are no longer 60 and 40 or 20. They are coming in in groups of five, you know, sometimes twos and threes. We see a lot of those groups. So maybe it does now I understand why that is happening. We see lots of uh, other than Mexicans, OTMs. Uh, in fact, the majority of the people, in fact, all the times I've posted and all the times that a uh, group of uh, criminal trespassers have sat down and waited for Border Patrol, I've, I've not really seen any Mexicans. They've been uh, uh, Guatemalans, Hondurans, uh, Salvadorians, uh, Chinese. So we're, we're, I don't see a lot of Mexicans there because when you get to our checkpoint, these are the folks mostly who cannot go up to a Border Patrol agent and say, sir, you know, or whatever, you know, here I am, take me into custody and then release me. Give me a free ride, give me a, give me a meal, uh, shoes, whatever. These are the people who cannot afford to be caught. So they move around the checkpoint. Uh, we, we're not looking really for the, um, the uh, economic migrants. We are looking mainly for a lot of bad guys. We see, we see criminal trespassers. I've uncovered uh, evidence of rape out there by the underwear that is strewn about. I've seen the rape trees where the bras and panties of victims have been left as a display to other coyotes and traffickers saying I am dominant. I have, we have evidence of criminal enterprises going on on private ranch lands, not under the authority of the ranchers, but under the authority of the cartels. It is a business. They know where how far those air stats see. 
and they know how to get around them. So we, last time I posted, and I posted three times this year already, we, when we posted so far out that our radios wouldn't reach our headquarters, we had to do a radio relay in order to get to the root of the narco, narco trafficking routes. So, yes, we've seen that, and we've done a lot. And uh, like I say, it, it, as somebody else here up here had said before, it is not a Mexican-American problem. This is a global American problem. And absolutely. Were you there? I understand that the, uh, it's not just Central and South America, that we have now apprehended a number of Somalis coming across, uh, Indian, uh, Chinese, Korean, yes, all uh, part of the makeup. Yeah, um, I wish Dr. Vickers was here because he could give you extensive yes. case by case of the documentation we've recovered from the, uh, the layups that the uh, illegals use. Um, they, you know, like you said, we've got an Urdu to English dictionary out there. We've got all kinds of, we've got uh, quantities of money, uh, reals, from uh, Iran and other Middle Eastern countries. Uh, we see a lot of that out there. No, I, I mean, you mentioned at least one of the witnesses uh, was chairman. Unfortunately, a lot of our witnesses have to work, and so they, they could not make it here. But I have heard the testimony. I've been there for some of these where uh, Dr. Vickers, where they actually brought in the translation manuals that went from Arabic to Spanish to English. Last time he was up here, he had those documents, uh, and DPS has reported on the apprehension of uh, Somalis. So it's uh, you're, you're absolutely right. This is this is not a an, an issue of just as Mexico. That's where our border happens to be, but it is so porous that what's coming across there are real threats. It's so porous that we're able to establish internal checkpoints at choke points, seventy miles inside our borders. It is not the Rio Grande. It is where we're able to interdict, and this is a problem. Now. Uh, you don't have to take the Texas Border Volunteers' word for it. You can just, if you can believe uh, mainstream media, you're seeing reports now of terrorists being caught. Uh, you don't hear about it a lot, but those reports are leaking out. You hear of ISIS camps across from the safest city in America, El Paso. I wonder how that happens next across the border from Juarez. But uh, those are the type of things that we're seeing, and it is across the board. The DPS reports themselves state the seriousness and the breadth of the threat facing Texas and the rest of America, because not all the threats stay in Texas. They move across our country. Thank you very much for your work, your volunteerism, and all the good things you do, and thank you for being here today. Well, we, treat, we try to keep working as concerned citizens, and we're glad that you're listening to the voice of the people. Thank you, Mr. Holes. We appreciate it. Thank you. Is there any